All right, folks, how are we doing? It's Shabash. Welcome back to the channel. It's Ornit again. And in this beginner guide series video, we're going to be taking you through part one of our warrior class progression in Orna. From tier 1 to tier 10 and even beyond, we'll take a deep dive into class skills and passive abilities, what specialization options you'll want to consider, which trusty companion followers you'll want by your side. In part 2, we'll go through itemization and gearing options at each tier, what's optimal and what's your best bargain basement alternatives. Now we're not going to be covering the most efficient playstyle at each tier in this video, or the best and fastest way to get the best items in the game, because RNG plays a huge part, everybody has different playstyles, everybody is playing the game at their own pace. But we'll definitely still be happy to answer any of your specific questions in the comments below, or in another video talking about specific class tiers. Alright, let's light a fire under this and get started with the general warrior class tree overview and we'll just go quickly over the skills, the abilities of each class and why you want to pick these up over certain other options and we'll also be going over the supplementary classes in which you'll learn really useful skills that you'll be using through all parts of the game. All right let's start with a level one tier one warrior class the original and the main skill you're going to learn from here is actually Warcry, which boosts your attack power, gives you the single up, and you're going to be using that skill throughout the entire game. Charge is quite useful early on, but you're mainly going to be using the attack button anyway, and Lunge is generally more useful for recharge ability classes, which aren't that apparent in the Warrior line. None of the Tier 1 classes have any abilities, so let's move on to Tier 2, in which we're going to be picking up the Paladin. This is a great class at Tier 2. The elemental skills you learn are really useful for taking down resistant and immune enemies which you'll start encountering from tiers 2, 3 onwards and you actually learn those immediately at level 25. At level 50 you pick up Osmo Strike and Omni Strike which are pretty useful as well. They're a bit mana heavy at the start but once you've gone up a few levels they will become useful. Ability wise the most important one is critical hit. This only affects the attack button but you're going to be running out of mana regularly and the attack button is actually super good early on anyway. Valhalla and Way you can kind of ignore because we're not really going to be recommending you pick up a pet until tier 4 and we take Paladin overnight because look at the skills. They're, they're useless early on. These are useful skills later in the game when spending 10,000 orns on an extra class is not a problem. You're not going to be easily taking down the Rune Knights and Mithril Knights with this class. Okay, moving on to Tier 3. We actually again have two options, but we're only going to take Battlemaster at this stage. The reason for that is the skills are much better, they're much more offensively minded, and it's just going to allow you to travel through the game, kill things much easier. And actually double edge is actually going to be really good for raiding. It's going to allow you to get a hit on the higher tier raids, even way above your level. And uh, when you join a kingdom, that can be quite good because it will get you into the drop loot pool. As long as you do more than zero, well, more than zero damage. So you do at least one damage. Double edge will get you that. So you can get drops like gauntlet keys, arena tokens, potions, that sort of thing from, from raids that are much higher level than you. Cyclone and Trika are really good as well. Look at the abilities. Apothecrist is actually quite nice. You get 25% you get more juice out of your potions. Critical hits again. Your attack button's going to be a really good source of damage. It saves on the mana potions. You can quickly go through mobs. Just pump the attack button. Experience step, we're not that bothered about. It doesn't make that much difference. I guess if you like hiking, it could be useful to get an extra level or two i doubt it will actually give you that much experience if we go over to centurion the skills here are really defensively minded um, there are actually some nice ward skills and protection too which gives you double up defense at the early stages of the game they don't give that much of a benefit we want to kill things as fast as possible and protection too and barrier although they are good later on in the game we don't necessarily need them right now okay we check the abilities of centurion as well you can see there's nothing offensive here uh, centurion's ward will mean you'll start battles with ward automatically activated but you barely have any ward at lower levels anyway so it's pretty much useless all right let's move on to tier four where without a doubt we're going to pick up adept we can see we have the exact same passive abilities as battle master but the skills we learn here are actually really good barrier two gives you defense and resistance single up in one turn and we're going to learn a couple of other nice skills which lead on and do a little bit more damage from the tri cut one skills etc you learn from battle master the good thing about the adept though is it can use both warrior gear and thief gear it just gives you more options to pick up nice weapons from. 
Okay, moving on to tier five, and this is the first choice you're really gonna have to make depending on how actively you're playing the game. We've got two options. We've got Dragoon or Majestic. Picking either one will let you go to the tier six Blade Master. Yeah, you can see the tier six Blade Master, you need Dragoon or Majestic. So let's go over each one. All the tier five classes can actually wear any piece of equipment, including mage gear. So just remember that when you go to tier six, if you're wearing magic gear, you're not gonna be able to use it. We go over the skills of Dragoon. The big one here is Dragon's Vengeance and Dragon vengeance 2 which you learn at level 125 these skills get charged up depending on the amount of dragons that you've killed over the last 36 hours and the charge is actually really significant so if you're playing the game pretty actively i'd actually recommend picking up dragoon and going around just casting dragon's vengeance on people you'll start to, you'll realize how much damage you do the other pickup here is blight strike which is a dragon element skill this will be really useful to use against enemies that are immune to elemental skills and physical damage as well the dragon's vengeance 2 takes two turns in battle Battle, but it does a lot of damage when fully charged it does take more dragons to charge up fully yeah so going over the abilities you can see the main one dragon slayer kind of ties in with dragon's vengeance skills uh, the more dragons you defeat over the last 36 hours increases your stats dragon slayer and the dragon's vengeance they're not the same thing just bear that in mind dragon's vengeance is a skill and it doesn't do dragon damage it uses the element of your weapon so if your weapon doesn't have anything on it it will be physical damage if you see that it's got earth or ice or etc dragon's vengeance will do that element in damage so dragoon if you're playing the game really actively you're killing lots of dragons i recommend picking this up moving on to majestic majestic is also a really good solid choice you can see it's more elemental based rather than dragon based you pick up the more powerful elemental strikes you also pick up uh, osmo strike and omni strike 2 which are really useful especially once you start raiding it will allow you to last longer during raids uh, around this point you'll be starting to do star lord and maybe Titan a bit more regularly but none of the skills here will do as much damage as a fully charged dragon's vengeance from dragoon so if you're not playing as regularly majestic is a really good pickup the skills here are super nice it will last you well into tier six and seven so going over the majestic's abilities we've got critical hits again which may not be as potent as tiers two three and four you may be wanting to use the multi-hit skills like tri cut a bit more often than just the attack button eternal light it raises your stats just by having the game open basically i think it now also increases your view distance as well okay so to summarize the tier five class you can basically pick what you want if you like dragons go with dragoon if you like elemental stuff majestic is solid moving on to tier six and there's only one option and that is the blade master so the blade master has the second chance passive ability this is the first time in the game you'll encounter this this is the skill where you sometimes survive with one hp in battle and if you're fighting other blade masters you'll see that it always happens to them they'll have second chance they'll have third chance fourth chance but you'll die first up without second chance proccing at all crest of avalon is one of these passive abilities which charges up your global stats you'll see this regularly throughout the mid game we learned some really nice skills as blade master horizontal slash is really good it's even useful later on for keeping up your ward x slash the proc rate on the bleed is really nice i recommend taking this in war fights against other blade masters especially if you put a dot like bleed on a defensive player that will actually take them down from one health before they are allowed to attack repost as well really nice it gives you ward for one turn useful later on and can also give you temp attack and defense swordplay is a really big multi-hit skill that we learned with blade blaster at level 140 here this will be really nice for raiding for the next couple of tiers it does use a lot of mana but but during raids you've got plenty of time to use mana potions coup de gras it's a nice skill it never misses but it does take three turns in battle so in wars and pvp where you would probably use this the most not really that useful and if you come up against a high defense enemy like a higher tier boss or a berserk boss a berserk arisen mob you kind of want to use a skill like double edge which will actually likely do more damage because kudokra does not have good armor penetration so blade master is really nice again you can use warrior and thief gear it's a common theme throughout the mid game being able to use more than one class of gear and it's the same theory going into tier 7 which is magistrate will now be learning advanced elemental strike skills this will do a lot of damage especially when you use your faction element remember you get the 25 percent extra bonus damage if you do damage with your own faction element and you learn these immediately at 150 leveling up a bit you learn osmo strike and omni strike 3 these are really nice skills osmo strike especially really high damage penetration really high armor penetration so you'll be you'll be able to use the skill on pretty much any enemy really nice healing really good for raiding really good for pvp what i haven't mentioned about the omni strike skills is they all have an equal chance to lower one of the four main stats of the enemy so that's attack magic defense and resistance you can see it takes more mana than osmo strike i would generally recommend just using omni strike one or two when you're doing raiding it's a bit more mana efficient and it's not going to be your main damaging skill looking at the abilities then for a magistrate 
We have Eternal Light again, so just by having the game open, your stats will raise over time. You'll also gain 20% extra view distance, which is super nice out in the world. And it's the first time we come across Steadfast in the Warrior line. Steadfast is super nice. Steadfast makes status ailments like freeze, burn, paralysis, stun, etc. These will not land on you as often. It's really noticeable going from a class that has Steadfast, swapping to another class which doesn't have it, you'll suddenly realize what you were missing. Critical hits, again, not such a big deal at this point the game will probably will more than likely be using the elemental strike skills and when you're in the world mana efficient multi-hit skills like tricut will probably be used more but if you get down low in pvp and you're out of mana landing that critical hit might be the difference between winning and losing all right moving on to tier 8 the atlas vanguard a stalwart holy warrior of lioness we're going to be picking up some really useful skills with this class skills that we're going to be using all the way through tier 9 into tier 10 as well the individual element ward skills for the four main elements are really nice especially in tier 10 against Morrigan. We're not going to be using them that much at tier 8, but you may come across certain enemies where you know what kind of element they're using as an attack. And then moving down as you level up a bit more, we're going to be learning some nice ward skills. The guarding strike skills are pretty nice to keep your ward going because you're going to be starting each battle with ward up. Ward of light is really useful later on when you've got more ward. You just get that extra bit of ward recovery. Purifying strikes can be useful against enemies which are immune to physical element and your main faction element. And then divine bastion is a really nice skill. This is the skill where you get 100% ward absorption and recovers a lot of ward as well. This skill becomes better as you level up higher and you're still going to be using this in tier 10. All right, we're actually stacked with abilities here as well. Crest of Lioness, similar to the Crest of Avalon from Blademaster. And then with Shoulders of Giants, we're going to have extra ward and we're also going to start each battle with ward up. This is super nice. It just gives you that added buffer of health. You can think of ward as extra health. With Siphon Ward, we're going to be gaining mana as people attack us. This only works while you have ward turns active though, so bear that in mind. Yeah, it's really nice for raiding, really going to be efficient on the turn use of potions. And then we've got Second Chance and Steadfast. Really solid passive abilities. All right, so moving into tier nine, we're going to be picking up Titan Guard. Looking at Titan Guard's passive abilities, you can see it's basically Atlas Vanguard 2.0. Most of the things are the same. Three of the skills have been upgraded, but there's nothing new here. Skills wise, it's a little bit of a letdown to be honest with you. The facade skills which grant immunity to elements are only temporary and they take two turns in battle. These are basically never worth using. You can just always go with the guaranteed resist skills. And then you learn Divine Bastion 2 which grants you extra ward recovery and extra ward turns, which is useful. I guess Guarding Strikes 2 is alright if you are using ward well and you're using that to extend your ward turns. Otherwise, Titan Guard isn't going to change your gameplay options that much. Moving into tier 10, we're going to come across the raiding god Gilgamesh. This is the first class in the game where you're uniquely going to be building around ward. That's gear and skills as well. We can see the Spiked Shield series of skills. It basically converts a percentage of your ward into raw attack stat. The first one isn't amazing, especially at level 225. You're not going to be having that much ward, but two and three, and once you build up your ward, it's going to be super good, especially in PvP. Diffuse ward is really Really useful in hard mode dungeons. Ward of Baylor 2 is really good. It's going to grant the four main elemental skills as well as, as well as holy and dark resistance really fast. For diffuse ward only the first one is actually that useful. All right let's check passive abilities for Gilgamesh. In tier 10 we don't need to worry about charging or passives outside of battle like killing dragons etc. They all get activated within the battle themselves. Bastille means you'll start each battle with half ward but if you pair this with cataphract spec you're going to recover up to full ward in a matter of turns and going from 50% to 100% of your ward that's where you're going to get the battle buff which at maximum ward doubles your stats siphon ward 2 is really nice for raiding and dungeons as well i guess it means we're going to be using less mana potions second chance of course steadfast 2 is really nice it means in a lot of situations we can go for offensive jewelry rather than things like ring of anwin and the guardian passive is not bad for defending territories the extra stat bonus does stack with the warden spec but what makes gilgamesh really strong at raiding in tier 10 is that it's resistant to dragon damage and the morrigan uses dragon attacks really regularly so hopefully by the time you pick up up Gilgamesh you picked up a bit of ward gear and you can go straight into raiding against the Morgan quite easily. Alright so now let's check out the supplementary classes we're going to go back and buy at certain points. These are really good classes for the skills they provide and we're going to start with the tier 5 druid class. So the three skills we're going to be interested in picking up while picking up the druid class is Mimic's Mischief, Golden's Fortitude and Bear's Might. Mimic's Mischief and Bear's Might will both give the attack double up giving us 50% bonus to attack in battle. They do have their downsides though of course. Mimic's Mischief will occasionally make you curse 
burst and will drop down your defense and resistance stats randomly. To counteract this, you can use the Anku's Ring at tier 7. This accessory will prevent you from getting cursed. Also, at later tiers, the Fallen Shield from Mammon will prevent curse as well. Bear's Might will always give you the double down defense and resistance. The best counter to that is, unfortunately, time limited event items, Ring of Day, and Arch Gadget. Keep your eye out for event rays that will give these drops. For that reason, I like the Mimic's Mischief if you don't have those items. There's at least a chance that you won't get the double defense or resistance downs. Now, Golem's Fortitude is a really important skill. It does give a single attack down, but you get the double defense and resistance up. This is probably the best defensive skill in the game, especially as a warrior class where we're going to have naturally high defenses. This gives us 50% more in battle. The attack down can be quite easily countered using a gizmo achieved from completing one of Cade's quests. And although that accessory doesn't give you anything else, it does prevent the attack down, which is quite useful during the mid game, as that will really hamper your damage output. I recommend trying to pick up Druid around tier 6 or 7. The Orn's return on investment will start paying off much sooner than you think. The power of the double attack up combined with something like the Berserker spec will really increase your speed doing gauntlets and raid. Okay, the next class we're going to want to pick up is the Arcanic at tier 8. We'll already have picked up the tier 7 Magistrate class as a prerequisite for this one, and this is also a prerequisite to the next class which we'll want to pick up as well for Swordplay 3. Now the elemental affinity skills that we learn from Arcanic are really useful, especially for raiding. Using the affinity of your chosen faction will override your weapon's inherent element, whether that's physical or something like Dragon from an Axe of Tiamat. This will grant us a 25% bonus to our damage while using skills like Swordplay. And a good example of where this is really useful comes at tier Tier 9, when all the god weapons have an inherent element to them. Specifically for warriors, the best weapon is the Demetrius Halberd, which has the inherent earth element. So unless you're the earth faction, you're going to be wanting to use your respective faction's affinity during raids, possibly during gauntlets as well. We're also going to learn Swordplay 2 and Quad Cut, which are really nice multi-hit damage skills once you've buffed your attack damage, and during raids, once you've decreased the opponent's defense, these will be your heavy hitting skills for maximizing your damage output. I recommend trying to pick up the Arcanic around the middle of tier 9, if you can see that you're going to have enough Orns for Gilgamesh at tier 10. If not, make sure you get Gilgamesh first before going back to pick up Arcanic. And then probably at the end of tier 9 or likely or more than likely during tier 10 after you pick up Gilgamesh, you're going to want to pick up the next class. Prerequisite is the Arcanic. And in an opposite fashion to the elemental affinity skills, Nyx learns the elemental skill, removing any element from your weapon, including the physical element which some enemies are immune to. This is really important for PvP. Quite often you'll come up against players who have resistance gear or they're going to have prism wall up from cataphract. And then finally at level 220 you're going to learn swordplay 3. This is going to be your main skill for raiding with Gilgamesh. This provides our maximum damage output per turn, especially when the temporary attack buff procs as well. We will then want to start saving towards purchasing our tier 9 faction god class. This is due to the spell Deific Channel. Deific Channel takes 3 turns to cast and it grants 100% increase to all of your stats. That's right, it doubles everything temporarily. This can last for 1 turn, 2 turns, sometimes 20 turns if you're lucky. Really good spell for raiding especially. Also useful in war fights if you're going up a heavily defensive opponent, especially a player who's a few levels above you. Regardless of which class line you go down, you want to be picking up Deific Channel going into tier 10. The final main supplementary class for learning skills is the tier 10 Beowulf class. We go for this after picking up Arcanic and Nyx because you're going to go have to go back to tier 7 and buy the whole pet class line from Dragon Knight up to Bahamut for prerequisites to Beowulf. The good thing about that is the main skill we want from Beowulf we learn at 230. So you'll have time at tier 10 to farm around, pick up some horns anyway with Gilgamesh. And the main skill we want is Gate of Gunner. All the gates act as standalone battle buffs. And the way that Gunner works is that it will provide us 50% attack bonus while reducing our resistance and our magic stat by 90%. Basically takes them down to zero. And these stat debuffs can't be countered. It's inherent to the gate skills. You can swap gate skills around. You can only have one up at once. And I guess the defensive gates learned at 225 can be useful as well for defensive PvP loadouts if you're defending territories against certain local players. But picking up Gate of Gunner at level 230 this is really going to maximize our damage against the likes of the Morgan. Remember, all your battle buffs stack with each other multiplicatively, and this acts like a double attack up. So multiply them all together, we're really going to be increasing our damage output to the max. After picking up Beowulf, I'll quickly talk about Realm Shifter. We can take this for the Sortie skill, which is really nice. It gives one turn of ward, so it keeps your ward going while doing damage. So it acts the same way as Horizontal Slash, but does a lot more damage. This is really nice for dungeon. The other mention is Deity, where we can learn Dragon skills. The Viper Strike is really useful, and uh, Viper Strike 2 even more so. These are great in dungeons when you're coming across Mighty Mimics and the Fallen God classes as well, especially when Berserk. The rest of these different elemental skills from Deity are quite nice, but Viper Strike is the most important, and it's the one that I've used the most. When you doing endless dungeons, which you want to start doing in tier 10, Viper Strike 2 has that really nice armor penetration. Alright, so that concludes the classes. 
Now let's have a look at specializations. So the important thing to remember with specializations is that your first choice spec on a new character is actually free. And for that reason, I don't recommend picking up any tier three spec. The 5% extra health and 2% extra attack from Brawler and these skills are really useless. An extra four attack isn't gonna help you kill anything any faster at all. So for that reason, I recommend the first spec we pick up is the Berserker spec. The power creep you gain from this spec is literally insane and it comes from only one skill, the level 100 Berserk. You can see there's another Berserk 2 skill you learn at level 120. That's not what we're here for. We're here for the Berserk 1. This skill gives us 50% increased total damage. It works on attack and magic. So it basically works like a second bear's might. And remember, they stack multiplicatively with each other. The self dot is only 5% of your total health. And during the early to mid game, this is hardly anything. One or two Osmo strikes and you're going to be back to full health. Pair that with your Wisp pet, which you're going to have. You can basically forget about the Dot from Berserk 1. The Dot from Berserk 2 is much more potent and that's one reason why we don't necessarily go for it. The way Berserk 2 works, it works like one of these Berserk mushrooms you can find. It increases all your stats by 25%, but the Dot is much higher than the Berserk 1. I generally don't recommend picking specs based on the stat because these stats only affect your base stat. They don't apply to any of your stats gained from gear. So for the majority of the early to mid game, an extra 2% defense and res, yeah, you can forget about it. Mighty Charge is also super nice it works like double edge it's got really high damage penetration at this level and i actually really recommend sticking with berserker all the way through until tier 9 until we pick up cataphract especially once you pick up atlas vanguard at tier 8 and you're raiding against bailey really and fallen king arthas atlas vanguard has survivability but may lack in attack compared to something like arcanic so the berserk skills are really going to help us out with that the berserker spec is so strong that you may even want to delay picking up cataphract at tier 9 when you have the titan guard class especially if you find that your raiding isn't that fast as might well be the case with the titan guard Anyway, let's talk about Cataphract, which is basically the ultimate warrior spec. That's due to its main ability, the Cataphract. You start with an extra three turns of ward, but you also recover ward every single turn. You pair this with something like Gilgamesh, which also has a lot of ward recovery. In longer fights such as raids and dungeons, you're gonna find by the time you use all your buff skills, you're basically going to be at full ward as Gilgamesh. We can just go straight into attacking. You don't need to worry or think about getting to low health or low mana like Heretic and Realm Shifter. So this pairs really well with Gilgamesh at tier 10. The skills you pick up with Cataphract, the main one is going to be Prism Wall. This gives us 50% damage reduction to the four main elements. Really useful for Morrigan, who obviously uses four pretty heavy hitting elemental spells. You pair that with the Gilgamesh inherent resistance to dragon, and then Gilgamesh Cataphract is immediately set up for raiding against Morrigan. Almost brainless setup. Quickly look at the stats with cataphract by this time the extra 10 percent defense and res it might get you an extra 100 to each stat and the extra 12 percent hp is actually pretty nice all right so gilgamesh cataphract you can't go wrong with it at tier 10 really recommended i'll just quickly mention the raider spec at tier 9 as well this is definitely not something you want to pick up immediately on hitting tier 9 or tier 10 this is more for your tier 10 when you've already picked up decent amounts of ward gear as gilgamesh and for example if you've got time to regularly raid in your kingdom or you've summoned a bunch of world raid bosses and you want to take them down a bit quicker raider can help you do that you do get a nice bonus to base attack at 20 percent, but you also lose 20 percent health which isn't ideal and the raider spec is going to give us the berserk 3 this acts like a double up to all stats 50 percent bonus to every single stat but the damage over time effect on you is quite considerable so for that reason so that's why i only recommend it once you've leveled up even higher it's not as safe as cataphract you do lose the extra ward recovery per turn as cataphract remember so you're going to find it takes you much longer to get up to max ward without using an immediate ward recovery skill like ward of light ward of war tonight etc but pairing the berserk 3 skill with a berserk buff from chimera and even a berserk mushroom is quite nice to see your damage getting boosted to insane levels we mainly want to see swordplay 3 hitting 100k damage per tick on the morrigan with this all right and last but by no means least regarding skills for the warrior line we need to talk about the arcanist building out in the world you're going to be wanting to visit this to buy ward of mithril from tier 6 and ward of ortonite at tier 10 these are both really solid skills increasing your damage absorption for ward really significantly at the respective tiers just remember ward of ortonite is going to cost you 1 billion gold you don't want to be visiting an arcanist seeing ward of ortonite available and then not having the gold ward of ortonite is probably my favorite ward skill in the game okay now let's go over which pets we're going to be wanting to pick up as warrior classes starting with the tier 4 wisp pet this is the best low level pet you'll really feel the effect of the 300 hp heal and Remember, it also cures common status ailments like burn, freeze, stun, etc. Try and pick this up before you purchase your tier 5 class. If not, get it before you pick up your tier 6 class. We're going to stay with the tier 4 wisp until we get to tier 7, after which we're going to pick up its big brother or big sister, the twilight wisp. Alongside wisps heal 1, it also learns wisps heal 2. This gives you a 1000 HP heal, as well as curing the same status ailments as the first one. Pairing this both together is really nice for raiding. It's going to keep your health high. You're not going to be losing health to burns, etc. 
and the holy and dark skills actually pack a little bit of punch as well i will always recommend trying to pick up your new tier class before getting your pet so pick up magistrate before picking this one up our next targeted pet pickup is the big one the pale dragon this is one of the rarest pets in the game to find in bestiaries it's extremely well versed in holy magic and holy healing we'll ignore its offensive skill set and concentrate on the two skills which make pale dragon one of the best defensive pets in the entire game miracle gives you a small heal but it gives you the temporary defense and resistance single up buff during battle this is really nice in pvp especially on defense you'll see a lot of players trying to defend their territory with a pale dragon equipped the other main healing spell is dispel this skill actually gets rid of most negative status afflictions things like blight even petrification where the wisps heal doesn't affect dispel will get rid of which makes it almost indispensable the reason i recommend pale dragon over higher tier defensive pets like fafnir and the pegasus which also cast dispel pale dragon just seems to cast it way more regularly more often you can count on it a bit better so at the time of recording pale dragon is probably the best defensive pet in the game based on increasing your stat and finally the most important pet we're going to be picking up at tier 10 is the chimera this is definitely the god of raiding pets because it gives you the berserk one buff 50 percent increase the total damage applied applies to both attack and magic also packs a little bit of a punch you will notice it doing damage against morrigan just remember to switch this pet out if you want to succeed in defending territories or trying to get that war defensive win the berserk dot will cause your ai to lose more times than win and speaking of pvp one pet we'll mention here as well as another choice is the greater yokai at tier 6 really good at causing opponents problems with stun freeze dots as well even on offense going up against an arcanic or a nyx in war fights greater yokai will really help you pin them down allow you to buff up and then take them out easily without missing and the final pet we're going to mention for the warrior line is the tier 7 warhorse this is predominantly a raiding pet the onslaught skill it occasionally casts can cause double defense down on your enemy so this is really good for mid-tier raids, especially when you're Atlas Vanguard, for example, going up against King Arthas, even Apollyon. You combine that with the Berserk skill from your spec, and your multi-hit skills are going to be doing a hell of a lot of damage. The only downside is that it does sometimes take a long time, a lot of turns for the debuff to land. And that's it folks, that concludes part 1 of our warrior class progression guide in Orna. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed it. We've gone over the classes and the skills you learn in depth, the secondary classes you're going to be wanting to pick up, also the pets and specializations. I really enjoyed making this video. Stay tuned for part 2 where we're going to be going over the itemizations for each of the warrior classes from tier 1 to tier 10. If you found something useful in this video, please consider giving us a thumbs up. Hit subscribe to stay tuned for more Orna content coming soon. I'm Shabash. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Ciao.